How would that experience be when you get choices in the space shuttle for traveling to the moon? As you have multiple flights to New York from different parts of the world. Just like that, you might also get four or five options on the trip to the moon. I know it sounds so strange, but it's true. As SpaceX is the only man in the arena in the fight for a trip to the moon. But wait, here's another competitor in the box, and that's America's independent space agency, NASA. There are so many things running in mind regarding this, and we know you all are also curious just like us to know about it. So welcome back to the channel, everyone. We're back with a hot topic again. And you know what? If you love to digest information, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button and also hit the bell icon so you'll be notified whenever a new video is uploaded. In this video, let's know everything about NASA's plan to give SpaceX company on the moon. The next humans to visit the surface of the moon will catch a ride courtesy of not only NASA, but Elon Musk and SpaceX. The space agency announced that it selected the high-profile rocket and satellite builder to provide the human landing system for its Artemis program, which aims to send the first astronauts to the moon since the end of the Apollo program, including the first woman to step on the lunar surface later this decade. SpaceX already has a vehicle in mind and is under development for the job. Starship is the next-generation spacecraft that's already made some dramatic test flights from the company's Texas Gulf Coast Development Facility. So far, each high-altitude flight has been followed by an explosive landing phase, but Musk isn't deterred. Starship is designed to transport astronauts to the moon and many more humans to other worlds like Mars, where Musk hopes humanity will expand to become a multi-planetary species. Well, NASA is getting ready to send astronauts to explore more of the moon as part of the Artemis program, and the agency has selected SpaceX to continue continue the development of the first commercial human lander that will safely carry the next two American astronauts to the lunar surface. At least one of those astronauts will make history as the first woman on the moon. Another goal of the Artemis program includes landing the first person of color on the lunar surface. The agency's powerful space launch system rocket will launch four astronauts aboard the Orion spacecraft for their multi-day journey to lunar orbit. There, two crew members will transfer to the SpaceX Human Landing System, or HLS, for the final leg of their journey to the surface of the moon. After approximately a week of exploring the surface, they will board the lander for their short trip back to orbit, where they will return to Orion and their colleagues before heading back to Earth. And according to a statement from NASA, Artemis astronauts won't be riding Starship all the way from the Earth to the lunar surface, at least not to start. Instead, a quartet of astronauts will launch aboard NASA's long-delayed space launch system rocket and Orion spacecraft on a multi-day trip to lunar orbit. NASA is planning to build a small space station called the Lunar Gateway in orbit around the moon that'll serve as a staging outpost for trips to the moon itself. In lunar orbit, astronauts will transfer to a waiting starship for the trip to the surface a period of exploration followed by a return to lunar orbit and then back home to Orion. In a press conference following the announcement, NASA's human landing system chief, Lisa Watkins Morgan, also revealed that SpaceX will need to perform an uncrewed test landing on the moon before taking astronauts there. This is in line with the approach taken with the company's Crew Dragon, which took astronauts to the International Space Station for the first time last year. NASA awarded contracts to three companies for initial design work on landers that could carry humans to the lunar surface. In addition to SpaceX, NASA selected proposals from Dynetics, a defense contractor in Huntsville, Alabama, and Mr. Bezos's Blue Origin, which had joined in what is called the National Team, with several traditional aerospace companies, Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman, and Draper. The award is only for the first crewed landing, and SpaceX must first perform an uncrewed landing. NASA is requiring a test flight to fully check out all systems with a landing on the lunar surface prior to our formal demonstration mission, Ms. Watson Morgan said. Kathy Luders, NASA's Associate Administrator for Human Exploration and Operations, called it the best strategy for NASA at this point in time to award the contract to one company and then begin discussions with industry about how to further develop additional competition out there for a future services contract. President Biden is sustaining plans started under President Donald J. Trump to send astronauts back to the moon. But while Mr. Trump pledged a return by 2024, the schedule was not considered realistic after Congress did not provide the requested financing and NASA is now re-evaluating the schedule. 
The NASA Artemis program is expected to launch its first uncrewed trip either later this year or early next year using a powerful rocket called the Space Launch System to propel the Orion capsule, where future astronauts will be sitting on a trip to the moon and back. The booster stage of the rocket passed an important ground test last month. For the spacecraft that would land astronauts on the moon, NASA had been expected to choose two of the three companies to move forward and build their landers, mirroring the approach the space agency has used for hiring companies to take cargo, and now astronauts, to the International Space Station. Two options provide competition that helps keep costs down and provides a backup in case one of the systems encounters a setback. NASA officials suggested that budget constraints, Congress in the current fiscal year appropriated only about one-fourth of the financing that had been requested for the development of the landers, shape their decision. We believe this is doable within what we have and what we can expect in funding, said Steve Jersick, acting administrator of NASA. In choosing just SpaceX, NASA officials also seem to be saying they believe that Mr. Musk's company can deliver on an ambitious spacecraft design, one that is far larger and more capable than what NASA actually needs. Indeed, once Starship starts operations, it would raise questions why NASA needs a space launch system rocket at all. Each launch of the space launch system is expected to cost more than $1 billion. Because Starship's designed to be fully reusable, its costs will be far cheaper. The Artemis plans currently call for the astronauts to launch into orbit on top of a space launch system rocket. The upper stage of the rocket is then to propel the Orion capsule, where the astronauts will be sitting toward the moon. Unlike NASA's Apollo moon missions of the 1960s and 70s, the lander spacecraft is to be sent separately to lunar orbit. Orion is to dock with a lander, which will then head to the surface. But Starship will dwarf Orion in size, making the architecture similar to sailing a yacht across the Atlantic Ocean and then switching to a cruise ship for the short ride into port. Starship, in principle, can take astronauts all the way from Earth to the Moon without as much of the elaborate choreography of docking. The Starship will need to be refueled with methane and liquid oxygen in orbit. SpaceX has been launching a series of high-altitude tests and Starship prototypes at its site at the southern tip of Texas, not far outside of Brownsville, to perfect how the spacecraft would return to Earth. SpaceX has made great progress with the maneuver of belly flopping to slow its fall, but the tests so far have all ended explosively. Mr. Musk recently pledged that the spacecraft would be ready to fly people to space by 2023, although he has a track record of overpromising and underdelivering on rocket development schedules. Nevertheless, SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket has become the workhorse of American and international spaceflight with its reusable booster stage. The company has twice carried astronauts to the International Space Station for NASA, and it is scheduled to loft the third crew there on Thursday. Numerous private satellite operators have relied on the company to carry their payloads to orbit. And another company, Astrobotic, announced this week that it had picked a larger SpaceX rocket, Falcon Heavy, to carry a NASA rover called Viper to the moon's south pole to prospect for ice in the coming years. On Friday, the Biden administration also announced the nomination of Pamela Melroy, a former astronaut, to become NASA's deputy administrator. Last month, Bill Nelson, a former Florida senator, was nominated to be an administrator. Let me tell you something, you made it this far, and I hope you found this video interesting and informative as well. And if you did, then hit that like and subscribe button. And if you really love this kind of stuff, then check out my other videos.